In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a beveled edge as if you've taken this picture down to a picture framers and they've mounted it behind some cards. So you've got like an inner bevel around the edge of the card, not in the photo. There's no easy way to do this. It is a little bit complicated, so bear with me and we'll get it done. So we've got the picture here. We need first to add a white border around the image. And the way to do that is to extend its canvas size. It's a very quick way of doing it. So we go to the image menu here and we choose image resize and we use canvas size. Now the difference between canvas size and image size, I suppose the best way to describe it is the image size is actually the size of the photograph that we see here, of all the balloons, etc. The canvas size is the size of the mounting board that the print is stuck on. So normally when we choose, when we look at a print, of course the canvas size is exactly the same size as the print because you don't see the canvas size. It's neither bigger or smaller, it's exactly the same size. But when we extend it, when we make the canvas size bigger, it pokes out around the edges. So you notice here, if I check the relative box there, it goes to zero. Height and width is zero. I need to just change this from percent to centimeters. So we've got 34, blah, blah, blah. The reason I add the relative checkbox there is because I look at 34 and I think, how many do I, what's 34 plus four and a half is, you know, 34.6. Anyway, my whole brain starts hurting, it's too much for me. So I just think I'm gonna click on relative, I'm just gonna add four centimeters, make it easy. So I put four centimeters and four centimeters. Of course, you can put uh, as much as you like, uh, whatever measurements uh, take your fancy or whatever's gonna fit into a particular picture frame. So making sure that I've got white, cause I kinda like white card, but of course we could have any color under the rainbow by clicking on the little uh, tiny little square color button on the right hand side there. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with uh, standard default white. I'm going to click OK. So immediately you see there are my white pixels around the edge. So it's kind of like a nice presentation, really. So if this was printed, it's going to print with this uh, four centimeter border. So it's going to be kind of nice. But we want to go ahead and have the bevel inside the edge of this print. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. The first thing I need to do here is to duplicate the layer. I can just go to the layer menu here and choose duplicate layer. We don't need to call it anything special. And there we go. Now, in order to apply a bevel to the white paper, or pixels, should we say, rather than the entire print, let me show you what happens if I just apply a bevel now. Go ahead and make a bevel. It puts it onto the outside. So that's actually uh, no use at all. So I'm gonna undo that. So we need to separate the white border from the picture. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can either choose uh, something like the rectangular marquee tool and very carefully draw a rectangular selection around there. It's kind of okay. You know, if you're, a, if you're a pixel out, the problem there is when I press backspace or delete, as you can see here, um, I've, got a t I've got one pixel along the edge on the right hand side. So that's a little bit annoying. So I can probably just shift the uh, selection and press backspace again. But an easier way in this example is because the photograph is not white, there's no white in the picture, I can use the magic wand tool. There we go, and I can click in the white and it immediately selects everything in the white background, which is just the color white. If there was a white sky or something like that in this picture, of course, the selection would bleed into the photo and that's when I'd get into trouble and I would probably have to use that marquee tool. But the magic wand tool in this example works absolutely beautifully. So what do we do then? Well, if I press delete now, of course, it's gonna delete the white border around my picture, which is kind of not what I want to do. I want to do the opposite. So very often in the world of selections, it's actually sometimes easier to select the stuff you don't want and then flip the selection by choosing select inverse. It's actually, I would have called it invert, but um, Adobe calls it inverse. We inverse the selection. So basically it selects everything but the white border, i.e. the photograph. Brilliant. So if you watch up here in the right hand side in the layer palette, when I press backspace, it all just disappears. And I'll turn the bottom layer off to confirm that. Brilliant. So far, so good. So we'll go ahead and then go back to the styles panel on the right hand side. I'm gonna click on that bevel, boing, there's the bevel, fantastic. But as you can see here, it not only bevels the top and the left hand side of the inside of my white card, but it also bevels the, the outside as well. So again, the picture frame is gonna get sacked if that's kind of the stuff that he serves up. We don't want that. So if we go and look in the layers palette, you can see a little FX symbol has appeared. This appears whenever you apply one of these fancy styles, it could be a drop shadow, it could be anything in the styles menu. Uh, the recipe for that is called the FX or the effect. If I double click, there is the recipe for the bevel. 
you know, I could actually add a drop shadow and all that kind of stuff if I wanted to doing it that way. But um, this is a very neat little feature because then I can adjust the bevel and make it look really horrible or I can make it look a bit more subtle. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, bevel of around about 15 is probably the go. Some, oh gosh, anyway, <laughs> around that mark, something, something like that. So we still have this problem of the fact that the bevel is in the upper, in the top and the left hand side, but not in the bottom and the right hand side because it goes to the outside. If I hit the down button, you can see it changes and there's my alternate version. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to live with that. I'm going to have the up version and click OK. And then I'm going to duplicate the background copy, the one with the white card bevel on it, simply by choosing layer, duplicate layer. I'm not going to bother to rename it. So now we've got two identical layers. I'll go back to my effects for the new duplicated copy. And instead of choosing up, which is the same as the one underneath it. I'm going to say down and then I'll click OK. So the trick here, of course, is you think, well, maybe maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll trim everything off and uh, it'll look OK. As soon as you start trimming stuff from an image that has one of these little recipes, these little FXs on it, see what happens here. So if I just, for example, I'll trim off uh, that bevel at the top, do that, you can see the bevel is still there. It just replaces it and just shifts it. So it's kind of running on whatever we see in the image there, which is kind of a bit annoying. So we've got the top bevel, let's go back here, we've got the top bevel down, and we've got the medium or the, the one underneath it set to, I think, up. There we go, up and down. So what we'll do now is very simple. I'm just gonna merge these two layers together and see what happens. So if I choose layer, merge down, or control E, or command E on a Mac, you can see it sandwiches. So we've actually got a bevel on the top left, right, and the bottom of the inside, but we've also got one all the way around the outside. Yeah, not terribly good. The way around that, of course, is this. Again, if I crop this, if I just use the regular cropping tool, look what happens here. Whoops, where's the regular cropping tool? Gone, here we go. If I use the regular cropping tool, it's going to crop it, of course, but it just, because this is still running in the background, let's just make that go a bit smaller, because it's still running in the background, whatever size the image is cropped to, it still has the bevel around it, so that's no good. But, if we flatten this again, and the key thing with this process is we flatten these two. We just use Control E or Command E on a Mac because the top one, the highlighted layer, will squash down to the one underneath it. It won't affect the background. Let me do that again. Control or Command E, squish. Okay, so that works very well. I'm going to show you. Whoops! I'm going to show you up here. Select. Uh, we're going to the layer menu. Here we go. So we want to go layer merge down like that. It's going to merge it. There we go. And you can see we've got the inner bevel as well as an outer bevel. If I merge down or flatten the image now as the second stage of this, where's the uh, layer menu? Here we go. And I flatten it. What it does is effectively kill the FX. So the FX little button on the right hand side has disappeared. I'm then just going to go ahead and crop this ever so slightly around the edge to get rid of the outer bevel because I really don't want that because that's just kind of like not my picture framing dream. And I'm just dragging this and I'll just make sure that that's just going to chisel off that. And I'm going to press backspace or enter. There we go. And now we have, there we go. Oh, I'm so pleased that's worked. There you go. So we've got an inner bevel in the cardboard mat and there's no bevel around the outside. And that very simply is, well, I say that very simply. It's a little bit of a long-winded process. It's quite a simple process, but it takes a little bit of the time. The key things to remember here are when you're merging down is to use the layer merge down command okay and you do it to the two beveled layers first and when that works out okay then you merge the currently combined bevel area with the photo in the background and then we just crop it